Hi, everybody. Let's begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing that I'm doing your will. Amen. Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be back with you um, as we try and navigate this weird e-learning situation. Um, currently, I am in my parents' being renovated bedroom. Um, I'm back home in Louisiana uh, for now, and hopefully we'll get to be back in Gary as soon as possible. Uh, I wanted to give a brief video introduction to the book that we'll be reading called The Great Divorce and, and explain why we're doing that in the context of chapter three of our textbook, uh, The Church is Holy. So the book, The Great Divorce, was written by a guy named C.S. Lewis, who's a professor and lecturer at the University of Oxford in England. And he wrote this book in 1945. And it's a reflection on the time that they're currently living in, so right, think World War II, um, and is also a larger reflection on what heaven must be like. What we find um, here and why it's pertinent to us talking about the church as holy is that holiness only actually ever comes from God himself. So whenever we think holy, we should think holy as in terms of who God is. And that any degree of holiness that we as human beings can ever receive isn't because of who we are as individuals, but is because of the grace that God gives us. Okay, so that's really important to understand from the get-go, is that whenever we talk about the church as being holy, the church doesn't deserve to be holy. The Jewish people didn't deserve to be holy. No one deserves to be called holy. Only We are, we are only holy because God himself decides to make us holy, okay, and we choose to accept that. That's, the, that's an important context for us talking about The Great Divorce, this book about heaven and hell. Um, so The Great Divorce follows the story of this character who is unnamed on his bus trip from hell to heaven. And so throughout the book, you'll encounter um, different characters as they start telling you about their lives. And maybe you can see some overlap either with your own. I know certainly for me, there are characters um, that I don't like that um, I also see parts of myself in, um, and maybe some, some good characters that uh, also um, might uh, remind you of yourself or the people that you love. So it's a really interesting story. It's very dynamic. Um, it takes a little while to get into. So if you're reading the first chapter and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so boring. The main characters are literally standing in a line. Don't worry. That's how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to start off slow. Let the book take you at its own pace, okay? Um, an important thing to remember, and I have four major tips for you whenever you're reading the book. First, read thoroughly. Be attentive to the details. What Lewis is doing is he's creating a world that's by and large uncreated. Um, no one has given him any ideas on how he should be talking about heaven. Um, he has some excerpts that he's pulling in from Dante, from um, the Masterwork of the Divine Comedy that I have on the library bookshelf in my room. Um, but other than that, and other than general church tradition, C.S. Lewis, this Protestant author, really is just kind of making th things up as he goes along. Um, he's pulling from tradition, but uh, again, the exact way that heaven looks is all his own creation. And that's important to understand as we move into it, because it provides us um, an interesting perspective into what heaven might look like and then might actually help us to understand some other things we've talked about in class. Um, so yeah, be attentive to um, the world that he's creating, the colors, the structure of the characters, uh, and what they're all trying to say. Uh, read slowly. You only have about five pages to read every night. Um, and that's not just so that way you can finish the reading and hop back on Warzone. It's so that way you can do the reading, do it thoroughly, um, and really engage with each of the words and each of the different um, plays that are going on in this great big work. Okay? Um, like listening to music or looking at a great piece of art, it really needs to take your time in reading it. So be okay with that. Um, and we have time, right? We're, we're literally doing nothing right now. So take your time with this great book. Mark up the text. Um, I think it's really important that we um, learn in high school 
uh, how we should be circling things of interest or underlining points that we might need to return to later. So if you see anything that you think might be important, either for the story as a whole or for you to understand the plot as it's going along, just underline it or circle it. Or if you like something, then circle that whole phrase or put it in brackets. And then finally, I would suggest that you keep a reading journal. You're not doing anything with your journals right now. So why don't you just use that as a space to record some really interesting quotes so that way you can return to them later. I mean, I think that this book is great, especially as we prepare for Easter, not just so that way we can think about what heaven is like and think about who God is, but so that way we can also pray with it and sit with it. And what does it mean for God to be calling us into holiness? And what does it mean for us to have to give up these things in order to encounter God? And what does heaven actually look like? We'll be exploring these questions and more throughout um, the next few weeks. Um, but please, again, be attentive, uh, focus on the quizzes, make sure that you're completing those, um, and just check in. I'll be posting a video lecture uh, every single day that we have a reading. So just watch those. Hopefully those will help to uh, illuminate some of the different parts of the passage that you would have read for the day and uh, maybe answer some questions that you have. As always, please feel free to email me. Um, I'll be uh, available at all hours of the day to get back to you. Anyway, I miss you guys so very much, and I look forward to seeing you hopefully in May. Anyway, love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.